Hey nerds, Mike here. Today I'm going to show you a tool that Lead Nerds uses for every site that we ever build using Elementor. This tool is a template and essentially the template is a site assets page, meaning that we're going to try to tell Elementor and the theme exactly what settings we want so that way as we develop the rest of the site, we could just drag in widgets with no issue and all the pages and widgets are gonna look exactly the same because we already set it up before we started building everything. So what's nice about this is because it's a template, I was able to export it and the link for that file is actually down in the description. So go ahead and get down there, download it. And later on, after I'm gonna show you how this works is I'm gonna show you actually how to install it and open it up and get started on your own site for your next project. So let's hop in and I'm gonna show you what this is and how to use it. So first thing first, we got a couple of notes here uh, to consider. Uh, if you follow the steps one through seven completely, um, it's gonna make a little bit more sense than hopping between step one and step four and so on and, and so forth. So uh, that's a pretty obvious step. Now we have the Hello Elementor theme. Make sure you go to your theme settings and you download the Hello Elementor theme and activate that. Next, we wanna disable the default colors and default fonts that Elementor uses. And that's just under uh, on the dashboard under Elementor settings. And then just make sure that these two check boxes are checked and hit save changes. Once done, you can come back to this page and refresh as needed. Then we wanna make sure that we set the layout for all pages that we're gonna develop with Elementor to use the default Elementor layout. So what we need to do is quickly head over to the hamburger menu, click on site settings. We can click on layout. And of course, our default page layout is Elementor full width. That means that as we develop it, um, the site will pretty much be blank except for the header and footer template that we will develop later on uh, as you start building your site. So with that done, we could exit out of that or actually update. Um, and then we could actually start working on the site itself. For this specific page, all I did is create a new page called Site Assets and I privated it. So that way only admins could see this. Um, that way it's just useful for us and obviously nobody else really needs to see it. But again, it's not hurtful if anybody does see it, but obviously it doesn't really help out SEO and people are just gonna be like, what is this? So just private it and that should be perfectly fine. So um, pretty much with all that set, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing first, we wanna again set Elementor to work properly with what we want to do. So to do that, I of course just have the site logo. It's a pretty basic step. Uh, we just have a site logo widget in here. And instead of actually changing this, we need to follow the steps within each of these boxes. So let's follow the steps. We could go to the hamburger menu, site settings, site identity, and we could add a site logo here. I just have a couple of predefined things set here. We could just click on a person here, insert. And in this case, step two, is very similar. It's creating a fave icon. If you happen to have that already, you could go ahead and add one here. Let's just use the same image for example, and we could go ahead and click update. And we could click back to editor. And once we go back to editor, the icon should update, but in this case it did not. We can easily refresh the entire page. And once done, we could see that the fave icon up in the top tab of the browser it shows that image and as well as the image it automatically updated as well. So that's step one and two done. And then the global colors, if you set this up brand new, again, I'll go over that later, but for now, once you get that set up, you can see that these options are here and you can come over to the left to the hamburger menu, site settings. We're gonna use global colors and we could just start renaming some of these. Again, in here it says that the names do not carry over. You'll have to rename some of these as needed. Um, but when you install fresh, you're going to start with just four of them, but either which way, once you have this set up, it could be very easily manipulated to come in here and change colors. And you can see the colors update live. And it's basically just a visual representation. If you don't need some of them, you could just go ahead and delete them. It won't hurt the system. So you could go ahead and just hover over the hex color and then you can find the delete global color button. You click on that and you can delete them. And as you see, as you delete them, it just resets the widget to the default background color. And that's pretty much it. You do not have to delete the widgets themselves. Once done, you can click update. 
And again, you could come back and rename these if you would like, or you could just leave them that way. Uh, but definitely get rid of any of the uh, custom colors that you don't need going forward. After that, uh, because now we're going to start utilizing those colors and everything else that we're going to do forward, um, let's look at the background. So if you want to set a site-wide background, we want to choose a different color. We can click the hamburger menu, site settings, and our background. And that's why I said to set the colors earlier is because what we could do is click on background type classic. And then the color we could, because we set custom colors, is click on that global icon. And then we could go ahead and select our options. And it will change everything on this page and every page on the site. So that's how we could easily change the background color from here. But again, the reason you want that to be global is that way you don't actually have to go back to this section ever again. You can always just come back to global colors. You could find the one that you have labeled background or again, find that specific color and then replace it as needed. Once done, now we get onto the typography. Now, I know Elementor does have the global fonts here, but what I find is that it adds additional code that isn't really needed or essentially it's kind of like overlapping itself and marking itself out. So I tend not to use the global fonts. Um, if there's anything specifically that I need to be different besides my default settings, I'll go in there and manually edit that one item compared to editing the global fonts. So I just never really found a use for this. Um, so again, back at our typography, we want to use the typography theme style. So once we click on that, this is where we can start creating our settings. We can come in here and start setting all of our options correctly. Uh, the body, of course, that's going to change our body color and our body uh, typography to whatever style that we would like. And pretty much we just go through and set all these options as needed throughout the entire thing. And once we're done, um, we will have a perfectly set up system. So pretty much whenever we need to use a heading, we just use our heading widget. And within our heading widget, we all we need to do is just change that one setting. So that way, once we're clicked in here, we just go to the HTML tag and we can just change this tag between any of them. And that will get us the correct styling per tag. Um, if for any reason you had alternate colors or text because you have a darker background, for instance, um, what you could do is create your own styles. So obviously there's no way to say, okay, there's H1 version one, H1 version two. So you will have to custom code this. What I have here is a HTML widget with some style tags in here. And in between there are uh, styles for our classes. So what I did here for each widget is under the heading one, I went to advanced and I just added alt dash H1. So then that way the coordinating uh, class alt dash H1, uh, classifying and selecting the H1 tags, uh, the color can be set to white. Uh, and then of course you could add any additional custom CSS in here as needed. Um, and as well for the links and hovers and things like that. Uh, you could just edit all that right here. Once that's done, uh, what you can easily do is take this snippet and then what you could do is go to Elementor custom code. You can add new, or in this case, I already have a draft built out. And essentially uh, you could just copy and paste that code in here uh, make sure again, you do have the style tags in here. Uh, so that way it references it as a CSS. And then we go ahead and make sure that we set the conditions to the entire site once we hit publish. So with that done, um, what we could do now is head back to our template. And the next thing that we would want to do is alter the buttons. So similar thing, we want to go to our site settings and buttons and make all your adjustments here for your buttons, including the padding and all those kind of things. Um, again, these buttons, any element, uh, any widget that Elementor uses that has an Elementor button uh, will inherit these settings as well. 
So for instance, if I make any changes here, it's going to adjust the form field button as well. So for instance, if I change the color, background color to this red, you can see it adjusts this as well. And just like before with the text, we can make alternate um, button classes as well by going to this HTML widget. And in here, I also have some predefined classes in here. And all I did for this button is add a alt dash button. So again, for any of these alt things here, if you were to ever drag in a button, uh, let's see for here, if I just wanted to add a button, but I wanted the alt button coloring. Again, after I added it to the custom styles uh, code that I added and made it site wide, then I could come back in here, go to advanced, and I could do alt dash BTN. And as you see, it's now white. And when I hover, it has the same attributes as my custom one in that box. So that's just a way, again, when you start building the site is instead of going in there and editing the background colors individually on the button, you could just go to advanced, type in that class. And then that way it will just carry over all those options that you type in uh, that are already preloaded on every single page. So you can go ahead and do that as needed. Last but not least, we got the form fields that we have an option to edit. Uh, we could go to, again, the site settings and the form fields. And again, we got some basic features in here to add uh, padding and borders and all those kind of basic things. So again, once we drag in any of these widgets, uh, you will have these default settings uh, already set up and it's gonna make your building of pages so much easier uh, as well as your templates and everything. So this is what we do and that's why we do it because um, it will just make everything so much faster. So once you have everything done, just go ahead and start creating your pages, dragging in widgets, and you'll see that everything will just work the way that you would expect it to work. All right, so if you are actually interested in using this, I will show you how to set this up properly on a fresh install. So here I have a brand new website created. Um, all I have installed is just Elementor, Elementor Pro. Again, we require uh, the theme of hello. So let's go to add new. And once we do, it's just right here on the front page. We can install and activate that. Once that's done, uh, it is preferred to have Elementor Pro, of course. Um, you can install this template with uh, basic or the free version of Elementor, but you're not gonna have some of the widgets uh, that I have on this page. Um, and again, Pro makes it a little bit easier to add in that custom CSL with those custom code uh, uh, sections to add all that. Um, and again, Pro just makes it a little bit easier. So once we have that set up, we can now go back to pages. And in this case, we can just create a new page and we can just add the title site assets and go ahead and publish. And again, what we wanna do is set this to private. So that way only we can see that and it's published. And now we could edit with Elementor. Once we're in here, uh, again, like I mentioned in the previous steps is we can go to our hamburger menu, site settings, our layout, and we could set it to full width. And then what I do specifically for um, this page is I set it to the page layout is set to canvas so it gets rid of the header and footer. So once all that is done, we're left with just a blank page. I'll refresh just to make sure everything's gone. All we need to do is then click on add template and go to my templates and we can actually click upload in the top right here and we could drag in that .json file, and you can enable an import uh, for all JSON and SVGs, or if you wanna do just this one file without adding any security risks, you can just do that. Now, there were some times where once I hit insert here, 
it does not load properly. In this case, it did. In the case of previous times, if it started loading, the, basically the left-hand side just uh, kept loading and loading and loading and nothing happened. Uh, all I did is refresh the page and I just redid those steps again uh, and then it would work. So as we see, uh, we have some colors up here that are default. That is fine. But what we want to do is, again, following these steps, we want to make sure that we also disable the default colors and fonts. So once we are back here, by going to Elementor Settings, and again, let's make sure that we tick these boxes and hit Save Changes. Once done, we can go back to this page and we can reload. So as you see, it got rid of the blue for the heading uh, and text and all that kind of stuff. So what I was talking about earlier with the default colors, the global colors, you'll see that we have these four, but then the rest of these are not set. That's because when you install a fresh version of Elementor, when you go to site settings and global colors, you only have these four. So what you can do is add colors, add as many as you need, and then what can be beneficial is after you set those colors is then you could come back to your setting here for these widgets. So as we see, we added actually two additional colors. We added four in total, but we only set two. So it's only gonna show those two. So in this case, I have, again, just a flip box, kind of edited uh, content, just has custom one. And if we go to background here, we can just set the color here. And again, as you see, I had those four options set, but two of those I left blank. So again, it's not gonna show us those two. So we have our item one. And again, if I did that for the second one, we could just set that to item two. So once that's set, once we go back to our site settings and we go to our global colors, we could see that now if we adjust these, it will adjust accordingly uh, to how we set them. So once that's set up there, just about everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, you're gonna have everything here. Um, and then again, I'll just show you real quick on how to create that custom code. So again, custom code, let's go, well, once you activate, <laughs> then um, go ahead and add new. And when you add new, it's gonna say add a title. You could just create a, a custom CSS. And again, this is uh, essentially a um, just a blank canvas that will be tossed into the head. So what we need to do for the head is again, like I mentioned before, is we need to make sure we have our style tags. And with those tags there, now we can go and get that code that is on the site assets. And again, grab that code in here in between the style tags. Or again, in that case, you can just paste the entire thing uh, with the style tags if you didn't already put that in. And again, once you have that set here, you can go to publish. And again, the entire site is already predefined. Just hit save and close. And then now it will load properly. So then we could go back to this page, hit refresh, and we'll see that it's still loading the content based off this HTML tag. But if we were to ever delete this, um, then the styling would still show because it's still being loaded globally across all pages versus just this HTML. So this is how we found to create the best setup for Elementor across all pages and things like that. Um, they have a lot of the global settings, but again, this is the best way that we found how, how to do it and the best way that I can give this to somebody else on our team and they can easily fill this out and um, orchestrate Elementor to work correctly and optimally uh, with speed as well. So again, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.